Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Balaji. How are you? Hey, Rajni. Doing awesome. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. It looks like we're going to finally uh, break the three-digit temperature in Texas. We've been in 104.7 craziness, but we eventually going to, by the end of next week, go into the 90s. We will um, feel like uh, Hawaii for us, so I can't wait. <laughs> that, that, that's that's going to be insane. Hey, by the way, we are at 25th episode. Um, this is our 25th episode. Oh, yes. Quarter century. So basically, that means almost a year, right? Is that we'll just call it a year? So that's that's our. We'll call this one the next one our year. So we, we one of the oh, yeah. marks. So that's all. Yeah, we we run bi weekly. Yeah, it should be close to a year. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, close to a year. So almost a year. So great. Uh, first of all, I have to thank you for uh, you know bringing bringing your technical know-how every week, and uh, it's been great. So I know we're gonna continue to build on this, but. Uh, it's been great, and I also wanted to, uh, like, we are, we started just with the kind of just talking about news, and now we've moved, and then we moved, of course, into actually building prototypes, and uh, over the last year, so much has changed, and uh, we keep the audience updated about that, and also uh, what we do to, uh, is we consume a lot of newsletters, a lot of articles, and we, you know, simplify that. That's what we enjoy a lot, um, so... I'm uh, glad we're here and we'll continue to go strong. And uh, if anybody needs any help with their AI projects or concepts or what they're thinking about, we would love to talk to you. So hopefully we'll uh, hear a lot from our audience too. Absolutely, Rajni. It's been a delightful ride so far. And I, I like the practical aspect of it. And, uh, and of course, thank you for collating all that information, bringing it into bite-sized material so we can talk about all of these things and and even show, show some practical examples. So um, it's been a fun yeah. ride. Perfect. All right. So we have a lot to cover today. So let's get started. It's a very interesting topic. It's always very top of mind for me. This one is uh, around, there's a lot of AI conversations. Some of them call it hype. Some of them are scared of it. Uh, I'm just starting to read the book uh, about the coming wave uh, by the guy who part of DeepMind. I'm excited. I'm going to start reading it this weekend. But anyway, there's a lot of um, what are we going to do if it goes out of control. Um, I'll let somebody, uh, you know, worry about it. At this point, I'm going to focus on all the use cases, but I, I will come back here and I'll give you my perspective after I finish that book. But in general, there's a lot of energy around, hey, we need to do AI adoption, but out of the high percent of organizations that we want to adopt AI, only about 14% have done it. So there's some surveys around this. So a lot of companies saying, hey, we want to do this, we see so much value in it. How do we uh, weave this into our existing process? And I think that's where Balaji, you and I are thinking about how we can help a lot of these uh, companies, small and medium businesses who don't have the same uh, money or the bandwidth to uh, you know, do this well themselves, by themselves. So that's what we can help. But anyway, it's it's a systemic problem of only 14% of the companies who really want to do it are adopting, right? So there's there's they don't know where to start. So we we can work with that. But our main thing is if you're gonna step away from it and say, okay, you are not even if you don't want to or you haven't started it, the other SaaS companies that you use, uh, be it uh, Intuit for use for taxes, if you use HubSpot for CRM, Zoom, uh, Microsoft. Uh, Teams, all these guys who are products that you use on a daily basis if you're in a corporate world, they have started integrating AI. There's uh, Copilot, Intuit, TurboTax, Credit Mar, they all have an AI assistant that was released. HubSpot uses AI for marketing and customer support. Zoom is now and Slack, and everybody else is summarizing meetings, action items, and uh, feedback. So for the companies who are like, oh my God, I'm not taking advantage of uh, AI. Just want to let you know that some of the products you're using are bringing this into uh, your world already. So you are leveraging that. It's like buying, a, if you want upside with the Apple or NVIDIA, if you have the S&P 500, you, you are getting the upside, you, you know? So anyway, they, I think it's happening uh, as we look for pure, I'm going to implement it for my particular um, uh, situation. Those are coming, I think we are uh, you know, slowly on the upswing on that, but it's just interesting to see that 
almost all of us, whether we consciously think about it or not, are using AI and most of the tools we use on a daily basis. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, um, we have um, approached this uh, marketplace from two different angles, like it's a top down, trickle down effect from enterprise to the to the small businesses or um, small businesses with something unique to contribute. They take ownership and start developing some of these. Right. Um, so I think this is a perfect um, way to look at it. Right. If you if you have a lot of integrations, your your business processes are closely tied to other SaaS applications. I think there's nothing more to do than just wait for these um, SaaS companies to, to implement um, their version of uh, AI superpowers for you um, and start paying for it and consume it. Um, that's already uh, looks like uh, in progress, right? But, uh, but th there's also this uh, angle where this is your business, your data, what can you do with your stuff to, to make your um, product shine in the marketplace compared to others? Um, I think it's being tackled from both angles. And yeah, SaaS uh, companies um, offering integration points, um, if they offer bundle it, that'll be an awesome start for a lot of companies. No, I agree. I think it's a nice segue into our next topic, but one of the key things we everybody is concerned about is, hey, how do we keep our um, data, our own data? So I think that's where really the open source uh, models really uh, come into play, right? Like what I mean by that is, if there is, you know, I know chat GPT is on top of the pyramid, followed closely from, from my perspective, Cloud and some of the other models. Uh, Cloud is also releasing a pro version, same $20. So I, I want to see what event that, uh, I think you do more calls and you can do with chat GPT. Anyway, all these companies are releasing, right? But if you go into pure open source models, Falcon uh, is one, and I know um, Llama is another one. So where it's important to have these so that companies feel co comfortable that they can take that and implement it and keep it private, the data private, but get all the benefits of having a very powerful model. So we can talk a little bit more about it, but I want to kind of talk about Falcon 180B, the Abu Dhabi government launched it. It is open source model in the, compared to Meta's Llama 2. Uh, Anybody can use it. Uh, it companies uh, aiming to train AI in their own proprietary data makes sense. Upside is, of course, private. It's cheaper because you don't have to pay for every transaction with like a chat GPT enterprise. And open AI can change its models anytime, right? Like, oh, chat GPT can change. I know companies that were built on it, especially some of the conversation items, uh, conversations, uh, they, it changed. When the underlying model changes, it changes the way you interact. And people are noticing it. So if you, if you had your own model, they, you can get to decide if you want to upgrade, if you want to leave it the same. So I think that it is uh, cool that all these models are coming up. But is, uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, what do you think about the Falcon, especially? Yeah, absolutely. We have been uh, following this from the first, um, I think, the 7 billion version. I was able to download, run it on my own NVIDIA card. It needed 16 GB of RAM and it uh, it was uh, subpar to 3.5, um, but it was good. I mean, for this, uh, from the angle of it's free, you can run your own local copy. Um, now, fast forward, we are at this 180 billion. I first thing I looked at what's the requirement. Right? This you cannot even run it. Uh, on your own, it needs a 400 GB memory and it needs a, a much powerful GPU. So uh, I think I'm sure Hugging Face offers um, some kind of a plan so you can run it on the cloud. Um, I'm curious what the cost, even though there's two aspects of this, right? When we come to these running these models yourself, yes, there is no uh, a cost for access, but there's cost for running these inferences, right? So you have to take that cost on your side, um, you may not pay the uh, the access fee, but you still have to pay the uh, compute and whatever um, uh, inherited from this um, running this inference. Um, so that's the first takeaway. Uh, obviously, this is way more parameters than before. So I was very eager to see how this is all going to work. Um, so let me bring up. Um, so they have a demo page, so I thought I'll play with it. Um, 
So what I did here is I took one of our um, one of our episodes from last week. Um, I took the transcript um, and copied. Mm -hmm. This only supports up to thousand words. So I kind of took the transcript and trimmed it to thousand words and said, "Hey, create an email newsletter." Right. Let's see okay. how how it performs compared to um, other models. Um, and essentially, it came up with this particular um, response. Um, mm -hmm. in, in, at a very high level, this doesn't look like a hundred percent copy paste, right? So it's a, it's a summary and then your name, and then you have to do all the extra stuff to make it. So almost like a summary of the summary we provided basically, right? Correct. Correct. And it, it, it formatted it into a, a tone where it's like an email tone, right? Hello everyone, blah, blah, blah. This newsletter finds you well. Um, the, another thing I, um, I did not find here was it did not pick up on the brand one million mind. Um, it did not uh, highlight some of those kind of things. So let's look at what um, a plod, right? Um, does compared to okay. so if you look at this one, it's the same prompt, right? Create an email newsletter mm -hmm. from the following. Um, this looks a little bit more refined it has a subject it has dear reader maybe you can fill it up with your thing and uh, one mm -hmm. thing i always like um for, with respect to cloud is the is the way the information flows in the in the material so um the structure sentence structure is, is much more readable um and essentially that's what it came up with and again okay. the material material is is in line it's not hallucinating Right, and both of these are yeah, materials. That's, <laughs> that's the first check. Yeah. Is it hallucinating? No, it's it's coming up with material <laughs> from the text. Um, yeah. So that's good because the first version of Falcon it was hallucinating a lot. Right, it was doing all kinds of stuff. So, yes. Um, so, um, and and then the third comparison I have here is the. This is the a big boy. Yeah. GPT four. Now it has all the bells and whistles. So I just gave uh, create an email newsletter. Blah blah blah. Now you can see. There you go. It picked up the brand. It put with it as formatting a, with I right. Wow. And then it 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 basically it's almost ready. I can just copy paste send an email type of a format like a host corner. Uh, it picked up that I I said something about something and demo. Um, we did um, feature topic. It kind of categorized it nicely. Let's try it out. The demo we did um, and it even took material and it formatted oh, the. Wow highlighted the text we, we actually had in the video that we showed people, um, which came through transcript. Uh, it's fun. The, I, 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 again, out of the three, oh, wow. definitely I, I, I still like the, again, it's not like um, I am saying that this is better than the other, but I think in certain aspects, um, you can already see the GPT-4 performs much better. The first prompt I gave was summarize this for me in bullet form, and all three are on par. I mean, there's no clear winner. They're all formatting basic. Uh, so so why I am saying this is I think fast forward Falcon is doing all the basic stuff, all the, uh, the generic stuff in a good format right now. But um, in the meantime, others are doing things like this. Now, there's a gap, right? <laughs> so there's a catch up. Um, so um, so th th that's where my mind goes, right? If, uh, I would definitely choose GPT-4 because I can just copy paste it. <laughs> I agree. And I think that's interesting you say that because all of them, when it comes to summarization, which is one of the core things that we use generative AI, they are very comparable. But as you, but again, before we go there, Cloud now can take a lot more content to summarize even compared to chat GPT, right? So what's right. going to happen to on my perspective, we talked a little bit about this, is there's not like one that wins you, depending on your use case and your style, you're going to use one for, let's say we use cloud for just summarization. We take that and we chat to finish it off. So it's going to be almost like a daisy chain of things that can happen to get it to a result. I, don't, I mean, again, chat GPT might in alone work, but I'm just using this as an example is I think each model will be specialized in something and we're going to have to use a uh, multiple ones to get to exactly what you want. So that's going to be interesting. That's a very interesting way to look at it. I think the more and more you look at the subtle differences where each one shines, it 
prompts people to chain them for a certain thing, like almost like a pre-processing um, uh, before the next model type of thing. It, it's a very interesting thing that I think people are trying out, even in the automated email composition. Um, you can use one model to create one portion of it and then merge it to the next portion and continue to build. Um, it's getting very interesting now with the multiple models. Perfect. So now that we've talked about data, moving on to our next topic, which is uh, data collection AI. I know it's a very sensitive topic, and I know a lot of people on the both ends of the spectrum as usual. Right? One of them is like, I do not want everybody knowing my data. Another is like, you can't really escape it, or you might as not even try to control it. So that's the two ends of the spectrum. But we, what we know a lot, which is obvious, is that a company like Facebook, TikTok, and Google, they uh, you know, they harness every bit of data they can get so they can you know, give the right ads to you. A new report from Mozilla came out as an interesting report, but this is to deal with the car companies and how are they harnessing massive amounts of, of personal data, right? They looked at 25 car companies. They all had their terms of service. They can collect a lot of data about us um, all the way from the um, money you make, your immigration status, race, genetic information, uh, some uh, not suitable for work activities. Anyway, they, they can um, to they can help to your photos, your calendar, your to-do list, because you it's so your car is connected to almost everything about your schedule and your personal thing, right? And if you want to opt out of it, there's a very uh, it's not easy. Let's just leave it at that, right? So anyway, it's interesting to see where our data is going. I mean, there might or might not be anything we can do about it, but it'll be good to know exactly um, where this data goes and just be aware of it, right? So because something, the one of the things said that this may result in a vehicle suffering from reduced functionality, serious damage, or interoperability. This is just you trying to get out of a, a car program's uh, data collection. So. It's a, it's not, a nice way to put it. it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's almost like a buying a timeshare that you can never sell. Right. That's really what it boils down to. So, so all right. Let's let's look at that. Um, the model you view. I mean the. So I don't, I'm not going to read through all of it, but the the bottom line is your car has a lot of information. From there, it flows into the car companies because it's connected to your phone. It knows your schedule. It has kind of, and I think uh, we were talking about some of the cars now come with even chat GPT as an interface. Uh, so, and then when the car companies have this, they can sell it to advertisers, to Google, to you get you use the Apple Play, CarPlay, you use Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, the government has a social media. There's just so many people who want this data from, from you. And then it's all uh, just, just as this is a great, um, report from Mozilla, but it's basically just showing you, you don't even think about it, right? Because you're just going about interacting with your car, but there's so much data being collected about you. It's good to be aware of it. So you, you know, if you have to turn off some things, you know what to turn off. And so then make sure your privacy, if you so care about it, then you can keep an eye on it. And again, I think some of these also will subsidize the car company, right? Being able to sell the data, but just your thoughts on it. I know you, uh, recent proud owner of electric vehicles so just, just tell me what you think of it. and i don't yeah, think I mean, it's just electric right i think all cars have a component of where they know your personal data at this point so um essentially i think um my viewpoint is yeah i, I would say i'm a late adopter on this uh, electric vehicle um uh, but um i think a lot of com uh, computer um power is being built into cars these days, right? It is not a simple dashboard. There is actually a full-on iPad type of a device in most of these electric vehicles. Um, and even uh, some of the uh, mid-tier or premium cars, you have uh, 4G built in, and, and there is ability to run Wi-Fi within the car. So there's two components that are already laying the groundwork, right? You have connectivity, internet connectivity to, to make these kind of things happen. And and, and then you have the, the compute power, um, which is way more than the the small what or speaker or the uh, not speaker the, mm -hmm. the stereo that we had uh, 20 years ago now it's like a full on computer um so um one of the things i i found interesting was uh, 
Mercedes is running this uh, beta program with the with the chat GPT starting last month, I think. Uh, now they because these cars now have microphone built in, you can you, you can talk to the car, right? A lot of these cars have voice activation uh, with Apple CarPlay. Uh, I think microphone came into play. Um, so now that they have the microphone, just have to say something, they wrote it through there and uh, they're trying to figure out what else they can collect. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like, um, yeah, you, you, you are on the car now, you, you're being tracked to the GPS. Now you can, uh, your microphone and then cars have cameras, right? It, it knows exactly where you are. So you, you got 100% coverage now. <laughs> with cameras, uh, internet, and GPS, um, it, it's getting very interesting how much data is flowing into these systems. Yes, I mean, I saw an article or a Google alert that told me, hey, by the way, you don't even have to use OK Google for some of these functions. I'm like, uh, what does that mean? So you have to always be listening to me so that you can, these words will trigger it rather than activate when leaving and say Alexa or OK Google, right? So it's, it's a, right. I don't know how long we can hide, but it's coming where I think you're going to be constantly monitored for keywords and they'll activate, but otherwise may, maybe there has to be some things that, hey, if you don't use it, you have to forget, no one stored it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like if it doesn't trigger for the last hour of you listening in, then just delete it. Don't like store it for future use, right? So it's right. going to be it's going to be interesting. A lot of these um, is new territory for all of us. So uh, just I mean, it's more of an awareness at this point is this is happening. Choose uh, how you want to use information that suits your lifestyle, right? So <laughs> exactly. All right, let's uh, move to the next topic. I know that's an interesting one uh, that we talked about is uh, enterprise AI. So I'm going to hand it off to you because you uh, it's, this is very cool what you found out. So let's talk through that. Um, absolutely. Uh, so um, this week, um, again, I follow some of the enterprise AI companies, and if you if you leave the the big um, the Google Microsoft type of uh, play, then comes uh, companies like C3 AI, um, which are trying to um, create a solution for the enterprise. Um, and and what was interesting this week is that they came up with uh, with a pilot a production pilot. They call it for 28 verticals. Um, let me share this. So uh, essentially, um, kind of gives an overview where um, where they see um, opportunities. So let's uh, quickly look at the industries um, that that these solutions catering to: defense, oil, gas, financial services. Um, Intelligence, manufacturing, utilities, aerospace, healthcare, and telecom. Um, uh, it's very comprehensive. Um, and as for the business processes, sales, customer success, finance, reliability, supply chain, um, and for enterprise systems. So they built models for either systems or functions within enterprise that is um, ready to go. Like, for example, healthcare, I'm pretty sure it's more uh, PHI and uh, information that's more careful compared to let's say i mean financial the financial data will be compared to just a customer service company it might not be as uh, relevant so it looks like they are drawing some um model or building some uh, sandboxes that are very relevant to each one of these verticals So the way C3 uh, structured this is a, is a pilot program that you can um, get in for, I think, quarter million uh, for three month term. Um, essentially it includes um, a, a platform that where you can bring in your data, you can take some of their models that they've used, or you can use uh, publicly available, you can integrate uh, if you want chat GPT or you, you can inter integrate other uh, uh, Meta or Llama or whatever model you feel like, right? You can bring you bring your models. You can bring your data. They give you this platform. I think the key component here is uh, bring your data through integration points. 
um, create or train, fine tune some of this and, and have the ability to produce um, something like this, which, is, uh, which I found a very um, compelling reason. So if we are to look at uh, a report like this, right? So, so what does this kind of system let you do for the enterprise, right? So the natural language query is focused. Again, it's a, it's a form of search now, right? Because we always had the, the enterprise search feature. Now this is getting, let's think of it one way, getting an upgrade, right? Now you can ask, questions in natural um, uh, language and, and the system is able to produce a report with all the data you provided and also trace it back to where it found the information source. So this is a the, this is what everybody's aiming towards, right? So not only you produce uh, the desired result, but traceability. Where did that data come from? Uh, it's very important, right? Uh, the, so um, I think the system that's able to provide this is kind of becoming very valuable, cuts out a lot of hours spent uh, producing these reports or trying to figure out where where to pull data from. We just kind of uh, put everything in the training and, and ask a natural language query. Let's see what kind of report we get. Um, and also they add other type of uh, capabilities like custom, um, for example, one of the things is predictive analytics, right? So there's specific things that you can add on top of it, create, um, oh, if this happened in the past, can you predict what will happen in the future? Like start uh, statistical models. And so these are modules that they bring in as a value add. Like, um, but yeah, the core component is bring in the data, try to make sense out of it and, and, and go from there, right? So um, that's, I think is the first stage, right? Uh, we have to be able to bring the data in to create these kind of intelligence. That's interesting what you just said. So basically it's, I'm, I'm going to we will call it here first, right? BYOD and BYOM, which is bring your own data, bring your own model to these uh, sandbox, I'll call them sandboxes, but they already have like a prediction capability or your vertical specific um, tools available. So you bring those two in, you drop them in there and you, you just go, right? That, that's how they're making it easier. Okay. Right. That's exactly it. So you retain the I mean, flexibility, right? You can run it in your own cloud billing account. I, the the quarter million is not including your cloud charges. Because that's all yours. It's just to implement the solution. So, um, so it, it kind of gives that uh, for control. We can do the same thing. We just don't charge that much. So I, we, we can't help a way to help other people. But I, what I'm saying is it's interesting because right now, instead of just people tinkering around like us, right? Like people who are in the early adopters, this is becoming mainstream. So tools like this, sandbox like this, where you can, I won't say drag and drop, but you know, make the next step easier rather than building everything from scratch. I think this right. is where it needs to go. At some point, we can connect it to a private data and we say, hey, by the way, use this out of the 15 open source model. This is the one because we talked about it. It's, you just have a personal preference to certain models. You pick that and you put them together. And maybe once the output from that, hey, by the way, use this other model to kind of finalize it to get an output. I can see that whole workflow happening. So it's it's going to be interesting. And I can be very early in this. So that's what the excitement is all about. So if you're an entrepreneur, you should be paying a lot of close attention because some of the bigger companies have the bandwidth and the dollars and the time to be able to invest in 250K every three months. Now everybody's going to be capable of doing that. So you are an entrepreneur in the space. It will be a great option for you to be able to help other SMBs, you know, execute on that. So, one hundred percent, yeah. If you if you have any thoughts on this as a, as you're watching this video, drop a comment. Let us know. Maybe we can all learn as a as a group. Awesome. All right, that was amazing. Again, we always could use another couple of hours to talk through everything that we need. We've covered. But uh, we have a lot more interesting um, topics for you guys next time. Until then, everybody, see you. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Rajni. Bye for now.